Hi there, let's talk about bacteria, funguses and viruses, otherwise known as the pathogens. Now, if you ever have to study any unit on health, then you are going to need to know this stuff. It's fundamental. Um, so let's get started with some definitions. Microbiology, what is microbiology? The study of science that deals with microorganisms. So what are microorganisms? They are uh, living things, generally, that um, you cannot see with the naked eye. You need a microscope to be able to see them. And like I said, we're talking about bacteria, viruses and funguses. There's also another one called uh, Protoctista, another group. They used to be known as the Protists. We'll talk about them briefly as well, and they come under the heading of, uh, of pathogens. OK, now let's start with bacteria. Bacteria are prokaryotic. The cells are prokaryotic. That means before the nucleus. They're much simpler than, than eukaryotic cells, than like human cells. Um, they have no nucleus, no membrane-bound organelles, no mitochondria. Instead, their DNA floats around in the cytoplasm. They also have a thing called a plasmid. You can see on this diagram here, this circle, this blue circle of DNA that, that works its way around in the cytoplasm. Um, that often contains genes that give the bacterium some kind of advantage over other bacteria, like antibiotic resistance, and they can pass that information from bacteria to bacteria. So that's a bacterium. We can tell, uh, we can classify bacteria on their shapes. Um, the, some of the more common and recognisable ones are the bacillus, the coccus, and the spirillus. And they, they, you can tell what shape something is from its name. So if you had something like um, Staphylococcus aureus, that's a, that's a kind of bacteria. You can say it's a, it's a cockle shape. Um, you can also tell the difference between bacteria and whether there's something called gram-negative or gram-positive. Um, but we're not going to go into the details of that in this video. Uh, viruses. Viruses are the smallest of the microbes. You could fit 500 million of them onto the single, onto a pinhead. Um, they are so simple, we're not even sure if they're alive or not. Biologists aren't even sure if they want to classify them as living things. Uh, they are made up of a core of genetic material. It's either DNA or RNA, depending on the type of virus it is. And that's surrounded by a protein coat. Now, what they do is they inject genetic material, their own genetic material, into a cell. This makes its way into the nucleus and it gets read by the host cell machinery. So essentially, your cell starts producing more and more viruses because your DNA has had this, this sort of alien uh, uh, code put into it. Um, eventually, your cell bursts open and this huge army of viruses leaks out of the cell and they go on to, in, to infect other cells. One of the problems with viruses is, that they can, is they can escape your immune system by hiding away inside your cells. I mean, things like shingles virus, um, the chickenpox shingles virus, that can hide away inside your cell for years and years and years and then pop out when your immune system's down. Uh, next up, funguses. Now, fungi can be single-celled like yeast, or they can be multicellular and complex like mushrooms and things like that. Um, some of them are decomposers, so they play a role in the cycling of nutrients. They break down dead material and liquefy it back to the soil. Uh, some of them are actually parasitic and live on or in living things. Most funguses don't really hurt human beings, um, but they can be pretty devastating to plants and therefore the economy as well, because if, if you can appreciate that if huge numbers of crops, hundreds or thousands of acres of crops are being worked out by uh, funguses, that's going to have a massive effect on the economy. Uh, protists or protoctista, these are usually single cell creatures. They're eukaryotic like us, so they've got that membrane bound organelle. Um, membrane bound organelles, they've got a nucleus. Um, they don't really neatly fit into any group. Um, the picture you're seeing here shows a malaria parasite which is carried by the mosquito and infects the red blood cells in their liver. Um, the red blood cells eventually rupture and the debris and the toxins that build up in the blood, they block the capillaries, they block the blood vessels. Um, now to combat malaria, uh, we need to know a little bit about its life cycle. So let's have a quick look at the life cycle of malaria. Now starting at the top, the mosquito bites its host, injecting its saliva to stop the blood from clotting. Now, via the saliva, the parasite finds its way into your liver cells and it spends a lot of time here. It can sit in your liver cells for ages, reproducing. A single liver cell can give rise to thousands and thousands of parasites. And this next generation of parasites will then leave your liver and infect your red blood cells. And here again, it can hide away from your body's immune system. The T cells, the B cells, the white blood cells, they can't find it because these cells, these parasites are inside 
the red blood cells. They feed on the contents of the red blood cells. These red blood cells will swell and they can burst and the, the debris and the swollen red blood, red blood cells can block blood vessels. Um, <clears throat> the host gets bitten again and these new parasites, the gametes of these new parasites, find their way into the female mosquito um, and that mosquito is infected and it, it finds its way to the salivary glands again and this whole cycle is repeated. It's only the female mosquitoes who carry malaria because they dr drink the blood, they suck the blood of their hosts in order to nourish their um, growing egg cells. So very brief rundown there of bacteria, viruses, funguses and protoctista, the pathogens. Thank you for watching.